Good evening. Thank you for joining us. My name is Celeste Prescott, Public Information Officer with Southwest Incident Management Team 1. This is the update for Calf Canyon and Hermit's Peak Fire for May 21st. I'll give you some updated numbers. During our Fire Watch 55-1 flight this morning at 11.30, they mapped the fire at 314,313 acres, 40% containment, and 2,899 personnel are now on the fire. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Southwest Incident Management Team 1 Incident Commander, Carl Schwope. Hi, good evening, uh, Carl Schwope, I see here with Team 1. Uh, tonight, I wanna to talk to you about uh, kind of a tale of two fires, even though it's the same fire. Um, you know, 314,000 acres, it's a long ways from north end to south end on the fire. Uh, the north end, making a lot of good progress, and, and that's two parts. Uh, the firefighters are in there doing a lot of, a lot of really phenomenal uh, work. And we also have favorable weather on the north end, but as you've seen throughout the whole duration of this fire, there's never a good wind direction, there's never a good weather for the whole fire. And what we get a one wind direction is favorable for this part of the fire, is not favorable for the other. So down on the south zone, uh, kind of on that southwest side, uh, getting into the Pecos watershed area, uh, that's where we're starting to see a lot of the fire growth. A lot of good work done in there, uh, but that's things that you just have to think about when you look at this fire. Um, so pay attention down there, you know, as things uh, develop and, um, you know, evacuation may change. Um, in those areas so I just ask that keep an eye on the whole fire the weather that's occurring on the north end may not be the same weather on the south end and sometimes what's favorable up here is not favorable down south so with that Celeste thank you very much Carl and we're going to go ahead and start with a operations update for the west zone with southwest incident management team one operations section chief Jason Coyle hi good evening uh, let's see, let's start over on this map, check the cameraman's ability to migrate. This is Division Kilo, so for us this is the air, this is Chacon, and this is the fire that's west and east of Chacon, um, on the, and this is the zone boundary. So along the, the Highway 121 corridor uh, south of Chacon, fire continues to back down the, the, the ridges here, um, not really a factor as far as increasing the risk or the threat to any of the, the structures or the values in that area. But there is still smoke in there and it's still continuing to back. Up here, is, you know, this, we're gonna be talking about this for the next couple days. So this, this, this northernmost point of fire here west of Chacon, this little piece right here where my, I'll use my little pointer here, where, where that went across the line. You can see how the H's are across here? Well, we like to have the H's go all the way around that. But that's what, one of the fires, one of the pieces of fire yesterday where they had some rollout, some of the heat from up here came down here and caused more fire and then it's kind of connected back to the main fire crews in there working it and and by that I mean they're working to put hand line all the way around the outside of it and then extinguish it and make sure that there's no more rollout that occurs off the slope below it to the to the northeast and they do that by digging cup trenches to catch the burning material and prevent it from rolling back underneath the thick spruce that runs off down here to the to the northeast. And as a reminder, that's um, 1,500 feet of elevation gain in about a mile. So you, know, you about have to use all fours to be able to climb up the side of that. Those crews are in there working. It's going to be a couple days still before they're able to get all the way around this and get it tied back into the dozer line there south of Martinez Pond. And when they do that, everything that's north of the 518 road uh, is going to be looking really good. With that, we'll back up a little bit and go back to the the map that shows the south of the 518 road. So we'll start far out. It's kind of what I talked about yesterday or this morning. The road in here to Bear Mountain. We've got dozers in here today. And they got some material to be able to improve that road. And using dozers, we anticipate that they're going to have this line pushed all the way out to, to just north of Ripley Point by the end of the operational period today. Contingent with that effort, uh, we took and we began early with the buckets hitting with the uh, heavy helicopters dropping water and hitting this spot that, that pushed out yesterday to the northwest, the one that prompted the evacuation of the, of the 73, Highway 73 corridor area. 
And right now we don't we haven't experienced any more growth on this fire, and we think that we've been able to pick up these couple spots. We'll see if the if the southeast wind or northeast to southeast winds that were predicted yesterday are still predicted for tonight. Then you know that's something that could, certainly has alignment with these drainages, and and so we'll we'll definitely be watching that tonight on night shift. And then after evaluating this closely, what we've chosen to do and the the crews that are doing it are in support of this plan is we're going to concentrate our efforts on the ground between that dozer line and Angostura. And the crews are going to work from either edge and they're going to go direct along this fire's edge. So, you know, this is just some incredibly steep, difficult country. This is going to be hard work, uh, hot shot work, we call it, and it's going to take multiple days to get across here. We anticipate if we, if we get all the resources uh, that, that we've requested for this, that it's going to take five to six days to button this up, to get this line secured. Again, we don't want to have the fire come out here while well, it's easier to burn off roads. These very steep cliffs in close proximity to each other create great opportunities for the fire to spot across the road and then start moving up to the, north, to the northeast again. Concurrent with that effort, we're identifying we're going to have repellers come in here tomorrow and develop some hella spots near the fire's edge going back down here to the to the south all the way near Serpent Lake or near the Serpent Lake Trail at least. And then those are going to be in preparation of inserting crews in there when we when we're able to get this edge secured and get around this spot and continue to work down here along the fire's edge all the way to where the Serpent Lake Trail ties back into the the rock if you will between um Hickoria Peak and then the the southern corner of the the ridge line before it turns back to the west. And then we're going to we're also going to coordinate with the the south the southern zone because right here is our zone break. You know, we want to make sure that while this these burned areas are pretty certain to keep the fire from moving north up there if they have any more activity in the, in in that area down below by um cows. We still want to make sure that we have identified all the different potential entry points if you were, will for any other fire activity and that we've identified ways that we're going to address that to make sure that that fire uh, or at least reduce the likelihood that that fire has the ability to come up and and threaten everything that we've worked hard to keep it out of and with that will be the end of the west zone operational update thank you thank you very much jason i'm going to go ahead and turn it down to our partners on the south zone for california interagency incident management team five operations section chief alex mcbeth path all right good evening everybody uh, once again alex mcbeth operations for team five um, overall yesterday on the south zone we got uh, we got some pretty good winds out of the the east and out of the south and so just to kind of show you what happened yesterday with the winds, uh, last night we were predicting those winds to come out of the east about 9 o'clock in the evening, and they did come out of the east. Low pressure set up over here, and it was drawing the, the winds around up into the Pecos Valley. What occurred is those winds hit this line over here on the west side, and we had an increase in fire behavior. And when I walk you around the fire, I'll kind of point out what we're doing with that fire behavior. But uh, it did push it off over to the west. Um, it, was a, it was shallow wind, and what that means is it, di it didn't go all the way up through the, through the gut of the fire. Most of the wind that hit us was down here on the very southern end, and so that's why we didn't see hardly any growth as we go north. Um, for tonight, that's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have winds more out of the east, and they're going to continue out of the east, heading, heading over towards the Pecos Valley. So a little bit different conditions with the wind, although it is going to be a lot cooler, and RHs are going to be a, a little bit higher this evening than they were last night. And uh, with, with uh, the wind coming out of the east, we're prepared for that fire to spread to the west, but... Um, we do think that the conditions are going to kind of die down a little bit quicker this evening than they did last night. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start in the south end down here around the El Barro Peak. Uh, everything last night held right on the southern corner where the Lower Barrales Road takes off and comes around into the Barrales Peak Road. Um, this corner, uh, it actually stayed really well. We had a couple spots in there, but they didn't really grow uh, too extreme. 
Um, just up from that in um, Apache Canyon, right, right up in there, uh, we did have a finger come out around 9 o'clock, uh, same with Redosa Ridge. Uh, it didn't grow very much. It, it, it only grew about 80 acres uh, in total, but it, it headed uh, to the west. And then Redosa Ridge, right to the north of that, had a finger come out of it. Both those we were, were pretty well predicted. Uh, we kind of knew that that was going to happen. We've had crews in there going direct and checking, trying to check as much as that, of that as they could. Those were two pieces that they weren't able to get into the last couple days, and, and those are the pieces that kind of squirted out of there. Now, if you see on the map here, we have, uh, we, we have road, uh, hand line, road, and then dozer line, the black X's. That's that indirect line that we've been talking about. Uh, we also call it 203 road, um, but it's a connection that they, we've been working on, both Team 3 from the Southwest and ourselves for the last couple days, of improving and making sure that that's hardened and we can receive fire on it. And it worked last night. So all the fire so far uh, today and the hard work the firefighters have put in has held it within our, in our lines that uh, we had established. And um, uh, we'll, we'll have to see how those winds hit it tonight about 9 o'clock. But as of right now, everything's looking really good down in there um, as far as uh, picking that up and keeping it in our lines. Now, as we move further to the north up into Bull Creek, uh, this is a little bigger uh, finger that came out uh, off the skyline. It ran clear down to the bottom of Bull Creek through spots over our lines that we had established and been working on. One spot uh, was about five acres, and another spot just on the inside of it about a quarter of an acre. The crews were able to pick up that five acre spot this morning uh, fairly quickly. They've been mopping it up all day, and that spot uh, is, is fairly well contained. Uh, the finger itself is still burning out in there pretty actively, and uh, all that fire growth is occurring within our, our line, so we're happy we want it to stay right there. As we move a little bit further to the north, uh, it's, it never squirted out or came out to the west up on the uh, skyline, and, and the, the indirect line that we have established is still there, and we have crews up on that, and uh, t tonight, if need be, um, they, they will be able to hopefully hold it on that. That's the plan. Um, as we move further to the north, everything was fairly calm. Like I said, the winds didn't hit it like it did on the southern end, and uh, everything stayed uh, very well. Uh, ver put, ver stayed put very well all the way up, uh, all the way up into the next zone. So we're real happy about that. We didn't have to to deal with multiple locations on the on the west side. So. Because of these, these uh, fingers that came out of here and their proximity to our indirect line, uh, we did some modeling. And what we saw this morning is there is potential for these two to grow together overnight, uh, early evening. And, uh, and that facilitated uh, us doing some evacuation changes over in the Pecos Valley. Uh, so uh, if you hadn't seen the alert that came out, please read it. Uh, it, it has uh, three or four communities that went into a go and one that went into a set. So be, be aware of that if you're out there. Um, the big thing that happened today that really made us successful or helped us be successful is we finally were able to get uh, aircraft on it. And we did utilize fixed wing retardant all along our indirect line where the fire had come down to it. Uh, and, and we used rotor wing today uh, quite successfully. The crews were able with the air support to get uh, to hold a lot of that and, and to get a lot of work done. So that was very helpful and we foresee that happening again tomorrow, uh, being able to utilize that air support. Um, night shift overall is going to be really cold tonight. So, uh, you know, we, we told our folks to be, to be vigilant and, uh, and make sure they're watching out. It might get down below freezing. So uh, we did have a little bit of moisture fog last night, and, uh, and hopefully we get some moisture tonight, but it might be freezing. So that's a big concern for night shift, uh, probably on all the fires, is, is these cold temperatures at night. And then what comes along with that is our hoses freeze. So they'll be taking a look at warming those up in the morning. So overall, a uh, pretty successful, a really successful day, and, uh, and we didn't have any structure loss, and we had minimal, minimal growth 
uh, just in the, in the south corner down here. So with that, uh, any questions, throw them up on there, and thank you. Thank you so much. That is some great news coming out of the south zone. I'm going to turn it over to the east zone for California Interagency Incident Management Team 2, Operations Section Chief Keith Garola. Good evening. <clears throat> Keith Garola, one of the ops chiefs on uh, California Incident Management Team 2 over on the east zone. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for us today, the... Uh, Big uh, news item was the moderation of, of the weather. Uh, the cooler weather, uh, the winds dying down, uh, no more red flag warning. Uh, that allowed our personnel to really do a lot of good work today. Uh, we're gonna start out with uh, the bottom end of, of our zone uh, down in Mora. As I reported out yesterday from Mora to Guadalupita, all this area is looking real good. It's still in patrol status. And uh, we anticipate uh, that to remain in patrol status uh, uh, until further notice. Uh, no, no issues in here. Last night, uh, there was a little bit of activity up here in the top end of Division Victor Victor. Um, there was a, a little uh, a slop over about 20 acres, and the crews were able to jump on it pretty, uh, pretty fast. There is a road that's below it, and the crews were able to put a line on both sides of the 20 acre slop over. Um, the crews worked in there all day today, uh, good crew work. We had, uh, again, like uh, Alex had mentioned, uh, good weather for the helicopters to fly. So we had a lot of bucket work on it and that's in check right now. <clears throat> We're not out of the woods on that. Uh, the 20 acres uh, is surrounded uh, either by a roadway or by hand line, but it still needs to be filled in. Like we reported uh, uh, the last couple of days, even though this may look you know, good and we're making good progress, we're definitely not out of the woods on the north end of the fire here. Because of the uh, containment that we're, we're able to achieve, um, we felt very confident that we could um, look at the uh, evacuation uh, process in here. And I believe that uh, uh, Sheriff Baca will report you out on that later. Even though this is looking real good, we still continued to prep around the structures out here in uh, Black Lake and, and uh, Hidden Lake. Uh, we're continuing to prep around structures up north in around Angel Fire and all the other communities in the Moreno Valley. There is some indirect dozer line that's going on top of the ridge. The crews are making great progress there. They're working towards the north, and we started uh, some crews up here at the summit working down towards them. Again, a lot of uh, good uh, work uh, on the fire's edge, but also around uh, outside of the fire's edge for contingency work. The contingency work is, is so critical, even though the north end of the fire is looking better, um, the work that they're doing now uh, will help for any future uh, fires that, that uh, may occur uh, during the fire season and for years to come. Um, that's the end of the report for us, and uh, have a good evening. I appreciate that. And if anyone has any questions that were not covered by our operations section chiefs, then please go ahead and drop those in the chat. We'll do our best to address them as they come in. Those more individual questions we're not going to address during the meeting, but if we do have some overarching ones, then we will go ahead and try to make time at the end for those. I'm going to turn it to our fire behavior analyst, Stuart Turner, now. Good evening, Stuart Turner. I'm the fire behavior analyst for uh, Southwest Team 1. As the fire behavior analyst, I predict what the fire is going to do, where it's going to go, how big it's going to get. So the big news has been the, the weather. The change in the weather has really moderated the fire behavior around the fire. And host, if I could get screen sharing enabled, please. Uh, has moderated the fire behavior as this weather has cooled everything down, moistened everything up, made life a lot easier on the firefighters. And uh, still wanting to share my screen, host, please. And uh, really has limited the growth for the day. Uh, what's happening is the humidity's come up and that's moistened up those fine dead fuels, the main driver of the fire out there. And when those moisten up, then um, 
the fire doesn't spread anymore. Yeah, Dean, can you go ahead and enable my, uh, so I can share my screen, please. From what we can tell, you should be able to, Stuart. And it says host disabled participant sharing screen. Okay, let's zoom in on the matrix. I'll just talk to the matrix, please. Can we get one of the camera guys to zoom in on the matrix, please? There we go. So as we can see here on the matrix, unfortunately I can't point to it with my cursor, but uh, you can see today, uh, for tomorrow I mean, Sunday, we're going to be uh, a little cooler again. Uh, cloud cover's coming in. That really moderates the fire behavior. And more importantly, that humidity is coming up into the 24%. So that, that helps moisten up those small, uh, fine dead fuels, the pine needles, the twigs, the grass, that type of thing. And that limits the growth. We're also seeing really good overnight humidity recovery. So what that means is the humidity is coming up so high that those fine dead fuels really come out of play through the night. So at night, everything just starts shutting down again and uh, not getting any growth. And then the winds are coming back down. You know, there's still 14 gusting at 29, but that's a lot better than we've seen over the past. Now, the big uh, problem, once again, is that little change in the wind direction coming out of the south southeast. And what that does is it exposes new fuels to fire that maybe haven't seen that wind direction and wanted to push things to the west a little bit, very much like we saw last night or last evening on the uh, southwest side. Let's see if I can share my screen yet. No, still not. Okay, let's uh, move to a map then, host. Can we get one of the entire fire? Okay, we'll just talk to this portion of the map for right now, but I will need to talk to the entire fire. So let's let's move from the Division K. That's the 121 corridor, uh, Chalcone area. We still see that fire backing down to the 121 road uh, as it comes down around the houses that's being burned out. So the fuel's gone and protecting the houses. Let's go around to the east side, all the way down the east side with any kind of east wind that's gonna push fire back into itself. Any spotting will, that occurs will push back into the black and not cause any trouble. Let's slide on down south, please. Do we have access to a bigger map? Right now we do not have the Southern portion okay, except I'll, for on the evacuation map. Okay, I'll talk to the other side of the map then. Let's go around to the west side on the Northwest side you hear from operations up there, the work they're doing there in the Angostoria area, uh, fully confident that that's not going to spread uh, as long as we have the cooler temperatures, the moisture air, and the availability of aircraft. Uh, I think they're going to be able to keep that in check, get that line, not expecting to see a lot of spread out of there. The only thing that would mess, mess that up is if we saw some drier humidity coming in. And, and winds that would push that off to the west a little bit with this east wind. Now, as we come down the west line, once again, any east component does want to test that line. So if there's any weaknesses there, any fuels that want to go upslope, enhanced by that easterly wind, that south southeasterly wind, then we'll see some growth there. Not anticipating a lot along that northwestern corner. Would we have access to the south map, maybe, the south zone? There we go. That looks good. Okay. So let's go all the way down to the south end. Um, there we go. And the very southwestern corner, as you heard from operations, is held. It hasn't moved in several days, and I think that's going to continue to be uh, locked into place. The big news was that... Uh, those two little pieces that squirted out yesterday uh, late in the evening uh, with that east wind, dry fuels, east wind, topography runs, it uh, ran right out and uh, made some growth there. And uh, I really want to show you my model for that, but still can't share. But um, so what I'm seeing on the models, I'll just try to describe this. Uh, what it's going to try to do 
and this is with no suppression action from the teams, it's going to want to go to the west and primarily to the north, growing together and then pushing all the way up into the Bull Canyon area until it runs into the uh, existing fire up there by Big Pine, that area. Um, it wants to move to the west a little bit, but not dramatically, maybe a drainage or two over as it follows the topography. Once again, that's with no suppression action at all. In the next couple of days, we have really good work days. The crews are going to be in there working. They, you heard from uh, you heard from the um, operations that they had their aircraft flying. So that should be really good work in there. It looks like I got sh screen sharing up. Okay, so I'll put my screen sharing up and I'll show you the run real quick. You can see the two little pieces that squirted out. This little gray part is what I expect to see day one. That'd be today, day two, tomorrow, and then day three, filling in all the way up until we run into the goat rock off to the west and into the fire over here. Remember, this growth is only with no suppression action. You heard from operations. They have control lines in there, crews working to contain this, and aircraft working to slow the spread, and I'm fully confident with the weather that we're being faced with over the next couple of days, that they will be able to slow the spread of this greatly, if not hook it and contain it uh, within those control lines. And let me uh, see if I can't continue to share my screen with another map. There we go. So we came down the west side. That's where we're going to see growth is in there. If we see it at all, as we come around the south side, Lagunas area, Mineral Hill, not expecting to see any growth. Coming up past uh, Las Vegas, that south-southeast winds, very favorable for those folks. Not anticipating any growth in there. Uh, not even really testing the lines. And then that brings us back up to where we started this whole show up in the northeast corner. Uh, and not ex anticipating any growth out of that area. I'm confident the crews up there have got that and that they're going to hold that. If we get a spot out of there, we may see some growth, but uh, not anticipating that at this time. And as always, we still have unburned islands scattered throughout the entire uh, interior of the fire, and those will continue to burn, and you'll see that uh, over the next several days, even with the moderate uh, weather that we have coming in. And let me just check my notes. Uh, oh, rollout. We heard a lot about rollouts. Rollouts is an interesting way the fire spots. Rollouts occur on steep slopes and rolling material can be pine cones, can be logs, can even be rocks dragging burning material down with them. Uh, it can be whole trees rolling down the hillside that are on fire. And as those roll down the, the, the slope past or through the fire line, they continue on down, setting fire down into the into the fuel that runs back up into the into the fire itself, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about rollouts, burning material that rolls below the fire. Tomorrow, I expect to see good burning conditions, good working conditions for the crews. They should be able to get a lot done. A late burns, uh, slight start to the burn day. Um, yeah, and I think that should do us today. What's going to happen? for tomorrow and I'll be around if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. We appreciate that. And thank you for all that are watching, for your patience and understanding us firefighters are typically better at using Pulaski's than technology. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Taos County Commissioner from District 5, Candace O'Donnell. Good evening, everyone, and a special good evening for all the residents of Southern Taos County. I want to give you some encouragement. I drove around the Penasco area uh, this afternoon, and what I saw is very encouraging. Residents are removing trash, brush from their yards. They're creating a defensible space, at least 30 to 50 feet from their homes. And I encourage everyone to continue to do so. 
Remove wood. M remove your wood piles from your homes. Uh, get them out at least 30 to 50 feet away. Uh, Tuesday morning, the Chamisal Transfer Station will be open at 8.30, and there's plenty of space for you to remove your wood debris and place it there. And as residents may have seen, now that the evacuation center is closed in Pinasco at the Pinasco High School, firefighters are moving in. Support crews, supply and camp crews are setting up as we speak. There are sleeper semis, three of them, for those that need a good night's sleep after a night shift or during the day too. Uh, they're setting up catering trucks, washing stations, portable showers. I also had the pleasure of speaking with Edgardo Lopez. He's supervisor of the supply crew that had just pulled in from North County, San Diego. The 12 member crew is from the California Conservation Corps and they were in Mora for a few days and now they're deployed in Penasco. And you'll be happy to know that there are public information officers in the area. Uh, one I know personally, local Forest Service employee, Paul Schilke. Uh, he is a PIO in training. And for those who don't have internet, the PIOs are posting flyers at the uh, Vadito post office and the Penasco post office. And at Rockwall, there's a bulletin board where you can stop to read the latest fire information. Seeing the firefighter base camp taking shape gave me a sense of ease and confidence. The Southwest Incident Management Team 1 is doing a great job to keep you safe. And as I was at Rockwall, it was reassuring to see in the distance a Chinook pulling water from the monastery pond and they were flying south up 518 to drop water in Angostura. And the spot fire too. And for those who may be listening from Texas, uh, your summer homes in Angostura, that would include Loma Linda, Cielo Vista Road, Tres Ritos. I know you can't see your security cameras now because the power's turned off, but I do wanna assure you that firefighters, firefighters and air support are protecting your cabins and homes and I'm happy to report there are no structures that have been lost. And I'm so impressed with the excellent work of the firefighters, the command team and law enforcement. I hope everyone in the evacuation area sleep better tonight with the information I've shared. Please continue to pray to pray for miracles coupled with the work that's going on in the air and ground, and that the communities of Angostura, Tres Rito, Sipapu, Placita, Vadito, Los Mocha, Santa Barbara, Rodarte, Llano de San Juan, and others be spared from the fire. So I'm asking everyone to remain calm, take deep breaths, to calm yourself, and sleep well tonight. Thank you very much, Commissioner O'Donnell. We really appreciate that message. I'm going to turn it down to the south to our San Miguel County Sheriff, Chris Lopez. Good evening. <clears throat> well, as, as many of you know, uh, it was a busy day today. Um, unfortunately, we did have to uh, implement more uh, go evacuation statuses. Uh, which was previously set statuses in the upper Pecos Canyon uh, from, from Monastery Lake North. Uh, those areas include Holy Ghost, Tres Lagunas, El Macho, and Lower La Posada. So those areas have been moved into a go status. Um, as, I, as I normally report, there's a lot of um, interaction between law enforcement and the incident management team and their operation section in terms of making these decisions. Um, as you heard from the, from the briefing a while ago um, from operations, you know, they did have some areas that, uh, that showed some concern last night during the, the night shift operations and, and they saw some runs. 
And so in, in, in looking at that and looking at what the fire did last night and having similar conditions tonight, um, and also the fact that the canyon is, uh, uh, the egress in the canyon, it's one way in, one way out. We did make the decision to go ahead and implement a, a go evacuation status on the canyon uh, as safety is always the primary uh, concern for, for law enforcement and making sure that the, that the people of San Miguel County are protected and taken care of. So I appreciate your patience and understanding as we, as we deal with that. And uh, one more time, uh, Holy Ghost, Tres Lagunas, El Macho, and Lower La Posada, which is the entire uh, canyon from uh, Monastery Lake North. Um, and so um, with that, you know, we still have uh, Bull Canyon, Cow Creek, Upper and Lower Colonias on, an, on a go evacuation status as well, which we've had for a few days now. And um, as, as you heard again from operations report, you know, the fire is getting a lot closer to those areas. And, and uh, I would like to say that there is an extreme amount of work going on in those areas as the team fights to continue to hold that fire from moving any more west. And, my, and I really appreciate the fact, you know, the amount of time, effort, and work that they're putting into that area to keep it out of, out of the Pecos uh, corridor. And so, you know, I... Again, my hats off to you guys in, in those efforts, as I know it's really making some, making it difficult as we've been dealing with it for several, several weeks now, and, and you've continued to hold it there, so thank you. Um, again, tomorrow, well, tonight and tomorrow, we're gonna still see some of those same winds, and like I've been reporting to you, any time that we do see those uh, easterly winds, we, we have had problems with, with this side of the fire as, um, as it pushes towards the Pecos corridor. So um, just to help you understand, you know, why those decisions are made. Also in those decisions, we also made, uh, we, we moved the, the Pecos community into a set status. Um, and of course, set meaning be ready to go at a moment's notice. And we want people to be prepared for, for the worst case scenario. Uh, that includes Camino Rincon, Rivera Ridge, east of County Road B-52, Peco Southwest, east of County Road B-53 and Rincon de Cielo Road, Peco Southeast, and then uh, East Pecos North and East Peco South. So uh, the other, the one other is, is the Pecos National Monument that was also put into a set status. Um, one of the pieces of, of the fire that really concerned me was that, that spot that got out over by Bull Canyon, which uh, you guys heard the report, they were able to get line around it and spend a day mopping it up. So that's really good and exciting news for me as that was one something that was really concerning being that it got over their line. So good work again on the, on the part of the incident management team and their efforts to, to keep checking this fire um, as we move into some what looks like better days of, of uh, better weather for them to, to uh, make some big impacts on this fire and hopefully finally get it under some kind of control, especially on this western edge, so we can uh, uh, start moving on with recovery efforts uh, on, on the rest of the fire. I've, I've been reporting about recovery efforts on the east side of the fire, as you see all this containment and, and people getting um, repopulated in that area. So in terms of evacuation, and the, and the places I was just talking about, we're, we're, I, I wanna let people know that we do have uh, the old Memorial Middle School here in Las Vegas that's open, the shelter, uh, and that, that's available to, to anybody that, that's evacuated. And there's also resources there for you if you need. Uh, and then we also have the Hino Viva Chavez Community Center in Santa Fe that's also available uh, as a shelter and also has resources available to those that, that have been displaced. So um, don't hesitate if, if you need a place uh, to go ahead and go over there or if you have questions or concerns, once again, uh, co.samiguel.nm dot us that's our our county website if you get in there you you can click the link the calf canyon hermit's peak fire link and there's a wealth of information and knowledge in there all our our most current updates it has all our maps it has shelter locations it has uh, uh resources there's also a resource link on that page if you click on that it'll take you to all the resources that are available for you then it also has phone numbers and if, if not if you're just looking for a phone number to call 
800-200-2080, and that's to our EOC, and, and they could answer any questions that you might have or concerns or get you help that you might need uh, in your time of, uh, of difficulty. And of course, like I said, um, we're, we're taking every step, taking every precaution that we need to to try and make sure that you're fully covered during this time of crisis, and we'll continue to do so until this is over. Um, so just a, a couple of rough numbers that I that I we put together today. We have about uh, on the PECO side about 807 homes that are, are approximately that have been evacuated. So that you know that's a that's a lot of homes and a lot of people that are displaced. And we're definitely working hard to make sure that we can that we can uh, take care of you during your time of, of of need. So that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sheriff Lopez. We really do appreciate your continued cooperation and coordination, and I sure hope you get a day off. I know you've been working for 50-some days. I'm going to go ahead and turn it now to the Colfax County Sheriff, Leonard Baca. Good evening, everyone. This is uh, Sheriff Leonard Baca with the Colfax County Sheriff's Office. Um, I just want to let everybody know that we have been meeting uh, daily at the Valverde substation with uh, California team two, incident management team two. Um, We're constantly evaluating, assessing, uh, getting you back into uh, your homes as quickly as possible. Um, we had some good conversations today um, and we have continued to uh, talk throughout the day, uh, as well as I stopped by incident command in uh, at the Felmont Scout Ranch today. Um, so good things are coming, uh, but please be patient with us uh, as I want to make sure that we get you back in your home safely and securely. Um, at this point, everything has stayed the same. Um, the the uh, communities that are in ghost status are Black Lake, Black Lake Resort and Hidden Lake. Uh, Angel Fire East and West are still both in set. The Vietnam Memorial area and Tells Pines are still in the uh, ready status at this point. Um, our roadblock is at Highway 434 and uh, milepost 30.5. Uh, you're gonna see um, we're still patrolling the areas, we're checking on your homes. Um, there's a lot of uh, fire crews and fire apparatus that have moved into the area. Um, they are setting up a fire camp uh, at the Eagle Nest Elementary School. So there are lots of resources coming into our area. Uh, I drove around there today. Uh, so uh, just be aware that we are doing everything we can to uh, protect your properties and make sure that everybody stays safe. Uh, for uh, those of you um, out there that are on social media, you can get all your information from the Colfax County Sheriff's Office Facebook page. Uh, you can also go to the Colfax County website. That is co.colfax.nm.us. Uh, find the Sheriff's Office tab and that will have all the up-to-date up information as well. You can also find the information at uh, NCWeb or on the Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon Facebook fire page. Um, for those that don't have internet access, uh, if you're trying to find out information, uh, you can contact the uh, phone number for the fire information at 505-356-2636. Uh, again, uh, just know that uh, we've been there every day and we're meeting um, to get you home safely. Um, just keep an eye on our Facebook page. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you so much, Sheriff. And I do owe you an apology for introducing you as the undersheriff earlier this week. My bad. All right. So we're going to turn it back down to our partners at South for a little bit more detail from the operations section, Chief. I know there's been some questions about what is exactly happening in the Picos area with the status of the villages and what's being done to protect it. All right. Um, once again, Alex McBath, Operations for Team 5. Um, yep, a lot of questions about structure protection, so I'll uh, kind of go through what we do as a team to uh, defend structures from damage um, and or loss. So, 
Typically, the way that it occurs is uh, there's a group, a forward group, that goes into all the structures in a certain area, and uh, those folks assess that area. They assess it for access and egress. They assess it for um, uh, the fuels work and or um, the, the build of the property uh, to determine what type of supplies, materials, or wa water handling equipment are going to be needed in that area. Um, it could be one structure by itself or it could be a community. So those folks go in there, they assess it, they come up with a plan. We usually call it a structure uh, defense plan. Um, that plan is then implemented based on fire behavior. So we may have folks go in there and assess it. They come up with a plan, but we don't implement the plan because the fire is a long ways away or it's not threatening that area just yet. In this case, I'll talk to some of the structures that are within uh, some of our current perimeter. All those structures were assessed. The plan, the defense plan was established. We got in all the supplies to those structures that was needed to defend that structure along with any work, groundwork that needed to be done, such as removing uh, fuels away from a, a structure, whether it be a house, a garage, uh, any type of structure, a chicken coop, it doesn't really matter. They, they get rid of the fuels uh, to, a, to a point where 30 to 50 feet away, which I'm sure you guys have heard that before. And then uh, they lay in the water handling equipment, and that could be pumps, that pump water through hoses that are, are there, there with big tanks of water, or it could be sprinkler systems, or it, it could be just um, removing the fuels because there's so much defense there, all we need is an engine to come in when the fire is getting close and we don't have to set up a lot of structure protection. So first phase is assessment, second phase is uh, getting it ready, and then the third phase there's, there's a couple of uh, uh, tactics that we use. So for structures that are unsafe for firefighters to be there when fire comes in, we run into those structures and communities sometimes. Um, we'll do what's called a prep and go. We go in and we prep it, we get it ready, we turn everything on, sprinklers are going, but the folks, the firefighters have to leave due to safety. It might be in a steep uh, canyon. It, it may be out ahead of the fire with a big front coming at them. And, and they don't have a safe area there to stay at. They'll prep it, get it going, and then they'll leave. Once the fire front hits and passes by it, they'll go back in and check it. And uh, make sure everything's still uh, there or assess it for damage. The second way is we stay and defend. So once the structure protection's in place, the fire's coming, operation says, yep, we need this area to have a structure, or our folks, firefighters in there. They go in, they, they actually stay in that area because it's safe. There's enough defendable space in there for them to be safe as the fire front comes in. And they stay, they squirt out any of the hot spots. Uh, once the fires move past and everything's safe, they'll move on to the next assignment. So those, that's kind of the iteration of structure defense. Now, in particular, down the southwest, the Pecos Corridor, everything in lower and upper Colonus and everything, all the structures inside of any of the fire behavior that we're having right now have all been assessed. All the supplies are where they need to be, and the plan is established, and it's going to be based on fire behavior and how fire uh, comes into that community on which parts uh, firefighters respond to. So an example would be the, the, the structures that were down in, uh, in Division Charlie. There's a few structures inside of our line. When that fire spotted out last night, made a few runs. Those structures had folks at them last night. All the, the preparation that had been done, they turned the, hose, the sprinklers on, uh, they sat at the house and, and defended it and kept fire away from the property to the best of their ability. That has all been, been done, and as of right now, we haven't lost any structures from any of the activi activity last night. Now, we're still in the assessment phase and or uh, um, getting supplies to some of the structures further up the Pecos Valley. So those areas include Holy Ghost, Romano, uh, Cowles. Those areas had folks in there today. And, the, and they're assessing it. Tomorrow, we've already received the order for what supplies they're going to need to prep it. And then additionally to that, just not the structures, they're also starting uh, 
contingency lines around the community so hopefully we can defend the whole community before the fire even gets there and we don't have to implement our structure protection so hopefully that answered your question and um, and any other questions I'll be happy to answer thank you so much for that further explanation I know the folks in Pecos really appreciate it with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this evening's public meeting, and I appreciate all of your continued support and engagement. Your thanks go so far, and we'll see you here tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Until then, stay safe.